Hi guys, Michael here. In this video I'm going to go over what is the fire movement and if it is dead. Never has this topic been so important than today. We're heading into a global recession which could lead to a global depression. So you need to get your finances order and understand this movement and get amongst it. If this video brings you value, please like for the whole YouTube algorithm. And comment your thoughts below. I really enjoy chatting with you guys and I reply to everyone. And subscribe for more awesome content on personal finance, savings and investing. Let's get into the video. So what is the FIRE movement and how does it start? The FIRE movement is created by proponents who live extremely frugal lives by saving up to 70% of their annual income and investing it in an index funds and withdrawing 4% of that per year. So say for example, it costs you $50,000 a year to live, you would need 25 times those earnings for your retirement fund, so 1.25 million, and you can withdraw 4% of that, which equals 50,000. Magic, that's how much you need to retire. My movement became famous after two financial gurus read a book called Your Money or Your Life in 1992. And the core premise of this book was, is the money that you're spending worth the amount of hours you're gonna to have to work for that item? So say for example, if you wanna buy a new pair of shoes and it costs $250, but you're only earning 20 bucks an hour, is it worth working 13 hours to purchase those shoes? And it's also, to put in perspective, that's 13 hours of your life that you'll never get back that you're losing to purchase that item. Now the fire movement has been taken up mostly by millennials, where they take on extreme frugality, often savings all the way up to 70% of their income, and being in the workforce for five to 10 years or longer and then retiring well before the traditional retirement age of 65. Like I said before, to cover their living expenses in retirement, they will withdraw three to 4% of their nest egg. So normally this would be 1 million. So if you have 1 million, we withdraw 4% of that. That's $40,000 a year you can live off and retire early and live the good life. Now there's a few different variations of fire. There's fat fire, where people have a more traditional retirement or more than enough um, that they need to retire and they can live comfortably. Then there's lean fire, which is those that live an extremely frugal and minimalistic lifestyle, but they can retire much sooner. Then there's barista fire, which is people that um, don't work a traditional nine to five job anymore, but they just work part-time because they still don't have enough uh, to cover their yearly expenses fully by withdrawing 4% of their nest egg. So say for example, you need $1 million to retire and you're, so you will have $40,000 in living expenses. You could retire on $500,000 and only withdraw 20,000, but work part-time to still earn $20,000 from a normal job, but you don't have to work full-time in the nine to five grind and you take advantage of tax savings because the first $20,000 you make, you get taxed barely anything, if nothing. And then there's coast fire. Those that have enough to retire, but they still choose to work a part-time job, something that they're interested in, and that way they're still in the workforce, so if there was ever a big stock market crash like happened in March, they could still earn some money so they don't have to sell their shares at a loss. And they can still you know, be connected with people in their community, connected with people at work, but doing it much more enjoyable, and they're doing it because they choose to work, not because they have to work. So now that we understand what the fire movement is, is it dead? now that we're in a global recession and the stock market has plunged. Well, the stock market has mostly recovered its gains, especially in the US with the S&P 500 only a few percent off its all-time high, and the ASX 200 is only about 15% off its all-time highs. But this just shows the risk of retiring, and then there is a big financial crisis, and your retirement um, funds drop by 40%, so you've got a million, that's 400K on paper that you lost. That would be very scary and very emotional. But that's why you understand the principles of FIRE. And we're going to compare someone that lives a FIRE lifestyle compared to the average Joe, even in a financial crisis. The average Joe, he probably saves 5% of his income at best. At worst, spent, uh, saves no, none of his income. And he puts the rest on credit cards and afterpay. I guess this is why the afterpay stocks have surged so much. Because... Everyone is telling us, buy now, pay later, live it now, you know, YOLO, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. And this has caused a lot of people to be in a very bad position right now, especially if they lost their jobs, they have no emergency fund, 
they're crippled by debt and they've got a lot of expenses and people you know are saying yeah that's that's all good you know but if you invest in the stock market no nah, that's risky it's risky to invest in the stock market don't do that and it is if you speculate like on these tech stocks right now these after pay uh, stocks um, but you invest in the total stock market in an index fund and you dollar cost average so you're buying yes you may buy at the peak but then you would have been buying at the lows in March where you're getting a 40% discount. Okay, so the average Joe, he's just lost his job and he's got nothing. At best, he may have five to $10,000 in savings. And let's now compare someone that has been living the, the fire lifestyle, the frugal lifestyle for the past five years. Say for example, they're earning $40,000 a year after tax. They've been pretty hardcore. They're saving 50% of their income for the past five years. So before the peak, they also would have paid off all their debt and they would have had a six months um, living expenses saved because you must do that before you start investing. That way, if the stock market crashes, you don't need a panic sale and you can sleep good at night. So they've got their investments. So with an 8% return over the 8 to 9% return over the past five years, they would have had a portfolio of even after the correction in the stock market in the ASX 200, it'll still be worth around $100,000 today. So not only this, they'll be living a very frugal lifestyle, so the expenses would be low, so they'll still be in a good position right now to ride out these hard times, even if they lost their jobs. They've got six months living expenses, they've got 100K in investments, they've got no debt, and their overheads are very low. So this just proves that even in tough times like today, that the fire, the fire movement is not dead. And I'm gonna teach you more about the fire movement now and how you can take advantage of this movement and how you can get your finances in order and have a bigger, better, wealthier life. Okay, so we're heading into some very tough times and never has it been more important than today to get your finances in order. Now again, this is not financial advice. This is purely for entertainment purposes. You should speak to a financial advisor for your specific situation because I don't know your situation. But just in general, and given examples, what you should do is cut your three biggest expenses, and that is housing, transportation, and food. Now for some other expenses, maybe more, but in general, these are the three biggest expenses. So for housing, if you're young and you're single, best thing you could do is move back in with mum and dad and just pay and board, help them out too in these tough times. Alternatively, if you can't, just rent a room or rent with some housemates and you can easily do that um, in Australia or in Melbourne uh, with, with only $100 a week. So we'll say around 600 bucks a month. Also, if you want to be extreme, you can sell your car, rent a room where it's close proximity to work. Um, and that way you can cut your transportation costs pretty much to zero and you can just catch an Uber here and there. And for food, this can easily add up to, you know, 20 bucks a day you're spending on little things like chockies, little snacks here and there. I've been guilty of that. Um, and you know, just meal prep all your meals and you can cut your food costs by 50%. And it's these big expenses, by cutting them, you will have a lot more left over to invest. I'm sure if you cut those, you would have at least 500 bucks a month left over to invest. And you can be well on your way to retiring early, getting out of the rat race. And I'll show you a quick example right now. Okay, so we're gonna go over an example here. Let's say you're earning 30 bucks an hour. Now after tax, that's around $3,847. And you're gonna really cut your living expenses here. Now again, this is an example. I understand everyone won't be in this uh, situation where they can do this, but I can't give an example for everyone. So now you're gonna rent a room, and this is gonna cost you around 600 bucks a month. You're gonna cut your transportation costs by selling your car, living close uh, proximity to work, even best. Better yet, a lot of jobs you can work from home now. So your transportation costs are gonna be zero. Then you're gonna meal prep all your meals and drop your uh, meal budget or food budget to 300 bucks a month. You have $25 for phone, $25 a month for toiletries, 100 for entertainment, 50 for clothing, and 50 for the odd expense here and there. That brings our total monthly expenses to $1,150 a month. That gives you around uh, $2,600, uh, 27 to $2,700, quick math here, a month left over to invest. And if you do this and invest this amount every every month for eight years, you will have at an average return of 8%, an 
and if you invest this in index funds, um, you have $350,000 uh, now, if you withdraw 4% of that, that's $14,000 so you can withdraw every year without putting your nest egg at risk because like I said before, the stock market tends on average to go up around 7 to 8% per year and if you were storing 4% of that, you should be able to retire and never have your nest egg diminish. So here's a quick, that's a quick example of how it, by cutting your expenses to the extreme, you can have a much smaller nest egg you can retire in eight years on only $350,000. I'm sure many of us will still probably work part-time in something that we enjoy, um, but you don't have that pressure. You don't have that stress, and that's the probably the worst thing is going to a job you don't enjoy, but you do it because you have to do it, not because you enjoy it. Now, I'm sure gonna get some of you guys comment, you can't invest in the stock market, it's too risky. Look how it's dropped 40%, you know? And I completely un understand that, and I agree the stock market is a risk investment. That's why you should have all your debts paid off and emergency fund first and only invest what you can afford to lose and not speculate in individual stocks or the latest tech stock or the latest afterpay stock because that's very risky. You may get lucky in the short term and make some sweet gains and awesome, but if you wanna take the safer route, then index funds is the way to go. And if you dollar cost average for over 10 years, yes, you may invest now and it may you know, crash, but then you'll also be investing um, when it's at its lows. And now's probably a good time to start accumulating your investments in these times of uncertainty because there'll probably be a lot of days where the market drops a lot and you can buy on those days. People think this is risky, but they're more than happy to spend every dollar they have, put the rest on credit cards and afterpay. That way you are 100% guaranteed to fail. Even if you save money and put it in a bank account, the way the system is set up and it's unfortunate, but they are devaluing the currency interest rates are at zero and inflation, real inflation like food, housing and transportation is going up through the roof well, well way more high than they are advertising of 2%. I reckon it's more like 5% with the way I'm looking at my bills going up. So if you just keep your money in the bank account, they're gonna devalue that money and the system is rigged to increase asset prices. So if you put your funds in the stock market, it should outbeat inflation. You'll be way more ahead than just leaving it in their bank account. So the fire movement is far from dead. Another quick example, if you invest $250 a week for 24 years, an average return of 8%, guess what? Congratulations, you're now a millionaire. You have a million dollars and you'll have a great nest egg to retire. And even if it takes you 24 years to get there, if you're you know, 20 to 30 years old now, you'll still be retiring you know, well before 55, and again, like I was saying, a lot of people won't even be able to retire at traditional retirement age of 65 because the way of the cost of living is rising so much and none of us and much of us just haven't prepared enough. So I hope that showed you the power of what is possible. I know we're in some tough times, the cost of living is skyrocketing, the middle class is getting destroyed and it's very unfortunate. But this is why I'm making this channel. This is why I'm so passionate about this topic because it's not evil to want to be wealthy. It's not evil to have money. It's all about looking after your family, getting ahead in life and living life on your terms. And it's still possible. You just have to increase your financial IQ, reduce your expenses, invest for the long term, take a bit of risk. Nothing's 100% guaranteed. Even leaving your money in the bank is not guaranteed. Guys, if this video brought you value, please like for the whole YouTube algorithm and comment your thoughts below. What do you think about the fire movement? Do you think it's still alive today? And subscribe for more awesome content on personal finance, savings, and investing. I'll see you in the next video.